Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Here's lesson 26 of Mastering Java. We're going to learn about shortcut arithmetic operations or operators. And uh, basically these are things I'm mostly teaching you because you might see it in other books. When you uh, go deeper into Java, you might see it in code fragments. You may choose to use them yourself. Uh, that's up to you. I don't use them too much, but uh, they are useful for, for a lot of people. What I'm trying to illustrate at the top is this is how you might typically write something. If you were going to take x and add to it something and store the result back into x, then you might write x is equal to x plus y. Or if you're doing multiplication and you were multiplying x by something and then storing it back into itself, you might say x is equal to x times y. Well, there's uh, these things pop up a lot when you're modifying a variable by adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing by something else and storing it back into that variable. And so here's the shortcut version. If you have x is equal to x plus y, you can write that as x plus equals y. And this means exactly what it corresponds to on the left. x is equal to x plus y. Uh, down here, x is equal to x times y and so on. x is equal to x divided by y. So to show you that, let me create a couple of integers, x, and we'll set this equal to 2 and y, and we'll set this equal to 3, right? So we have two integers here. Let me go ahead and space this out properly. And what we want to do then is typically what you'll say is x is equal to x plus y. That's the long way to say it. So then you might say system.out.println like this. And you might say new value of x is equal to x. So don't forget the original value of x, the value of x that we have when we started the program was 2. Now we're adding 3 to it, which is going to give us 5. That goes back into x. So when I print it out, I should see a 5 here. And that's what I have. The new value of x is equal to 5. This is the long way to, to write it down. So the way that you can write it in the shorthand way is you can say x plus equals y. This means x is equal to x plus y. So when we rerun the program, we see exactly the same output here. If we change this to a minus, this means x is equal to x minus y. So x minus y should give us negative 1, which is what we have. And if I change this to a multiplication symbol, this means x is equal to x times y. 2 times 3 is 6. So then we should see a 6 here. And then if we do a division here, x is equal to x divided by y. This is going to be interesting. We get 0. That's not quite right. The reason it shows 0 here is because these are integers and you're taking 2 and you're dividing it by 3 and so it doesn't really uh, seem to make a lot of sense. So this will make a little bit more sense if we make it a double variable, make everything double variables and then we'll see now that we can see the full precision of what we have because now we're doing long division with a decimal point. So x is equal to x divided by y. So again, these are just shortcut ways of writing the standard, you know, x is equal to x plus y, x is equal to x divided by y type of deal. And it comes about a lot because a lot of times in programs you're modifying the contents of a variable depending on something else. Personally, if it's me, uh, personally, if it's me, I like to write it out. X is equal to X divided by Y. I just like to see it like that because to me it looks more like math and I'm a, I'm a math guy. So I like to, you know, see it all written out in terms of an equation. It helps me visualize it. But lots and lots and lots of people really prefer to keep really tight, uh, very compressed code. It's, it's more readable to those guys and I understand and respect that. So I'm showing it to you here so that as you're Going through Java, you can learn that technique, and as you read other code fragments, as you uh, increase your knowledge of Java, you will then uh, uh, have those tools available and know what they mean. Now that brings us to the end of Mastering Java Volume 1. We have covered a tremendous amount of material in this class. We have covered uh, literally assuming that you know absolutely nothing about Java, and we have brought you up showing you how to install the compiler, how to run the compiler, how to create our first programs. We've talked about the different kinds of variables, uh, the decimal points, how to convert between variables, how to do if statements and for loops, 
and just lots of different things along the way. And so we have a really good bedrock foundation in the concepts of Java at this point. Now you can't cover all of Java language in one volume of video lessons. It's just impossible. So what we're going to do here is stop it here. I think you have a very good foundation to go write some real programs and play around a little bit. Um, work the exercises that we've provided as part of this class. Make sure you understand all of those. In the next volume of Mastering Java, we're going to continue diving even deeper into everything. We're going to be talking about different kinds of looping statements uh, called while loops and uh, all, all kinds of other manner in which you can control the branching of your programs in more detail than we can do with just an if statement here. And then we'll eventually get into methods and classes and strings and arrays and all the other things that I know you all want to get to eventually but we have to crawl before we can walk so in these lessons here we've tried to set the foundation work with me on in volume 2 and subsequent volumes of Mastering Java and we will build your programming skills one by one lesson by lesson and step by step